So uh, welcome to the first of two workshops in the QFHSA Family Workshop Series. Um, on behalf of the Quebec Federation of Home and Schools, I'd like to introduce our facilitator for this series, uh, Jeanette Barrow. She is the owner of Epicutist, an in-person and virtual cooking school for budding chefs of all ages. Um, I hope you enjoyed this class and I hope that you've signed up for next week event with Lenny Schwar, uh, which will take place at 10 a.m. So thank you, Jeanette, for meeting with, uh, with me and for all of our guests will join us at a later time and uh, I'll leave it to you. Well, hello everyone. So um, like Mimi mentioned, my name is Jeanette Barrow. I uh, own Epicutist and we teach uh, people of all ages how to cook and to really explore different ingredients and different things of doing things and everything. And today we are going to actually have so much fun because we are going to be focusing on brain food. So we created this beautiful, Mimi and I have created this beautiful menu, this family brunch menu, where uh, we are going to be making an incredible uh, meal and it's going, the focus is going to be on brain food. So what is brain food? Brain food is all of those valuable, valuable um, foods that kind of help your brain, okay? So for example, if you have like a lot of really, really, um, uh, a, a good brain food will include anything like kale. So we're gonna be working with kale today. We're gonna to be working with fennel. We are going to be working with smoked salmon. So uh, a lot of fatty fish about like such as salmon and trout and everything have a lot of omega-3s, uh, which is really, really good for your brain. It helps, uh, helps things out. Um, also things like sunflower seeds. Uh, we have nuts. Uh, who, that are really good for brain food as well. Uh, we have sunflower, we have pumpkin seeds as well. Pumpkin seeds is also uh, really good. And of course we have arugula, which I have since so one of my favorite lettuces to, to work with and everything. And oh, we also have berries. So what we're gonna be doing is that we are going to be assembling a very simple, fun, delicious brunch um, from start to finish, and we are, get, and we're going to have everything ready. So what we're going to do is that we are going to start the recipe in this order. First, we're going to be making the Parmesan kale salad with uh, pumpkin seeds, nuts, and also sunflower seeds. We are going to be making a berry crunch with, with oatmeals and sunflower seeds and so forth, and using berries. Now I'm using blackberries, but if you want to use blueberries, you can just certainly do that. And then we're going to have this absolutely fabulous uh, bagel sandwich. So bagel with whipped cream, uh, whipped, whipped cream cheese with a flavored cream cheese, and it is with smoked salmon. Um, that's going to be delicious. And then finally, we are going to be finishing off with a wonderful treat with a non-alcoholic mimosa. Oranges are also excellent brain foods. So let's have a little bit of fun by putting a little bit of non-alcoholic sparkling wine, mixing up with a little bit of orange juice and everything, and we're going to have an absolutely amazing brunch. So uh, Step one, what we are going to do is that we are going to begin by making the kale salad. So I have already pre-cut and washed my salad and I sliced it into pieces just like this. But um, sometimes working with kale, it can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you with a lovely piece of fresh kale. So this is what it looks like. Uh, so when we're not using frozen kale and we're using fresh kale, this is it. It's a very, very um, woody leaf. Okay, so when I say woody, it means that the stem is very thick. Okay, so the stem is really, um, it's very solid. Um, and what that means is it's going to be very fibrous. Okay, there's going to be a lot of like pieces. So fibrous, for example, fibrous is celery. 
Um, if you are eating celery and you know how you crack into some celery and then you pull it out and there's like all those strings and those lines and everything, those are, um, those are actually, uh, that's fiber. That's the fibrous texture that I'm talking about. So we really don't want to, to actually eat the woody part of the kale. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be removing it. Now, thing is, is that we want to reduce waste, right? We want to reduce food waste and everything. And um, so what are we going to do with this woody piece of wood? Well, I'm going to be making a soup after. So I'm going to be making a fennel and kale soup with all of the different trimmings. So this is what we learn in culinary school, is that all of those trimmings that we actually have, have when we're preparing food and everything, we actually want to use that because that all costs money, right? And, and also we want to just generally reduce food waste because it's such a major issue that making a soup with the fibrous parts um, is actually really, really good, and it's packed with flavor. So what I'm going to do is that I've got, it's very, very easy to remove this. So you see that it's whole like this. What we're going to do is that we're going to leave it folded, okay? So then I'm going to be putting it on the cutting board, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, and then I'm going to actually cut my knife and go around the, the stem just like that. Okay, so it's really, really easy to work with. So I'm gonna just take the knife and just remove the stem. You see how thick this is? You see how solid it is? If you're chewing it, you're gonna be like, yeah, it's gonna be kind of chewy, right? So we've cut the fibers. A stem and then because I'm making soup later on I'm just going to cut it up into small rough pieces like this and voila there's all of my extra all the other stems that I did from the other salad I'm keeping it in here and after I'm going to be making the soup all right so now we've got the leaves and you're going to see it kind of like in two pieces just like this and then all we are going to do is slice it very thinly. All right, it's important when you're making a salad like this, especially when using raw vegetables like this, that tends to be a little bit thicker uh, and, and more like it takes a lot more to chew it, right? Because it's a, a, it's, it's a, a fiber stock you want to actually cut it into small pieces. So like cabbage, all right? So that's really, that's really useful. And so I have all of my small little pieces like this, and I'm going to add it to my salad. There we go. So here I have all of my kale already cut into small pieces. All right, so now the other challenge, right? Working with a fennel bulb, okay? So fennel bulbs are kind of big. They can, they're not intimidating, but maybe some people can kind of look at it and go, where do I start? So I'm gonna show you about where to show, start with this. So the first thing you want- Confes yes. Confessional from our house. We've never actually cooked with fennel or seen it in its whole state like that. So we're excited. Yep. Uh, uh, actually, that is very, very common. Um, we hear about fennel and uh, fennel is tend to, like fennel is something that you tend to have in a restaurant, but at home, people don't necessarily use it. And it's actually a very, very good uh, vegetable. It tastes a lot like licorice. Uh, so it's got that, that, fennel taste and everything. You, If you have fennel herbs, this would be it, okay? So you could take some of this, you can preserve, uh, and you can add, make pickles with this and everything. So that would actually be really good. Uh, but again, you're going to have a little bit of a waste. So this is why soups come into, um, come into play here. 
So I'm going to show you. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the stems off here. Okay, I'm just going to make it easier to work with. So the bulb is kind of rolling around a little bit, but it's fairly secure. Always make sure that your food is secure before you start cutting it. Because if it rolls away, you could cut your finger. That's how typically cut fabric. So I'm just going to take off the stalks just like this. Okay, so now I got the bulb right here. Okay. Now again, stalks. What am I going to do with these? I'm going to be putting it into my soup. So all I'm gonna do is put cut it up. As you could see, you see inside there's like a little hole and everything. This is that and you can actually see the fiber, okay? So you could see the, the the little pieces of fiber that are 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 in there. This look is very much like broccoli. So you get your broccoli stems. Don't ever throw away your broccoli stems. Put them in soup. Okay, same thing. All right. A lot of people would actually throw this away. It's not good to throw it away. Make a soup with it. So I just quickly, very quickly, because it's going to be a pureed soup. So I'm going to be able to use the machine to actually puree and and um, make it nice and smooth. So I don't have to worry about it being too small. I do, I don't want it to be too big either because it's going to take forever. Okay, so I've got this and, oops, that. Excuse me, Jeanette, do you have a recipe that we could share with our friends for a soup that we could do with this? Um, I do have one. Um, I actually have to kind of make it make it <laughs> I will I will actually share it with you because I'm, I'm working with this anyway so it's going to be I already started working on the recipe itself oh amazing so we'll we'll be your uh, fledgling testers <laughs> thank you Jeanette you're welcome all right so now we got the bulb right now the bulb has the root at the bottom we want to get rid of that but we have to first before we start working with it make sure that our cuts are safe so if you see over here, it's moving around and everything, it's kind of dangerous. If your food moves around on your cutting board, there's a higher chance you're going to cut yourself. So what you want to do is that you're gonna put it on the flat part, which is the base right over here. You're gonna put it on the flat part. You're gonna take your knife and you're gonna cut it in two. Okay. So now you're going to see inside, okay? And the fennel is coming out. The smell of the fennel looks fantastic. And you're going to see right inside over here, you have a root. Now that root is very stocky, so it's very, very fibrous. You're going to, not going to be able to work with that too much. And you also at the bottom right over here, it's kind of discolored a little bit. What we're going to do is that we're going to uh, trim the bottom off, just like that. Okay, so that is going to go into your compost. Now, what we're going to do as well, that now that we trim the bottom of it, and we've cut it in half, we're going to use the tip of the knife, and we are going to remove the stock, okay? And that will make things easier for you. you. Again, this, you can go, it can be put in your soup, but to eat this would be a bit too tough. It'd be a bit too chewy. Now, if you're like me, and um, the recipe calls for one small fennel bulb and you've got a ginormous bulb, um, which is what I have right here, um, you don't have to use the whole thing for your salad. So you could use, um, in my case, because it's so big, I'm only going to use half the bulb. The other half of the bulb, I'm actually going to be making it, putting it in the soup. 
So, Jeanette, I have a quick question from our side. Um, is uh, is it possible to store it in the fridge after it's been cut like that for a longer period of time, or is it? Can do we have to find a way of using it right away? Do we freeze it? Um, that's actually a very very good question. Okay, so um, you as soon as, with any vegetables, as soon as you start preparing it, so we mean cutting it, cleaning it, and everything, it shortens the shelf life. So if you wash your vegetables and then after that put it back into your fridge, that's good, but the moisture will affect, um, and also the bacteria that and everything will affect the, the, the quality of the vegetables and they will lose, uh, go faster. What I suggest with this is that if you're not gonna use it straight away, slice it up and put it in the freezer. That would be my my best bet. The, the, Fennel, because it's a very woody, fibrous vegetable, it actually holds really well in the freezer. Oh, so that's, that's good news. <laughs> Thank you. My, my recommendation. All right, so now what I've done is that I've cut the half of the bulb in half, and then I'm going to very, very thinly, like a coleslaw, slice it. And you're going to see as you slice it, it's going to be uh, breaking up into thinner pieces. Okay. If you're not sure about fennel, whether you're going to like it or anything like that, um, I would actually cut the bulb into four pieces. Um, that way, um, the pieces are actually smaller. So just an example of what I mean by this is that I have the half bulb right here and I'm going to cut it in two and then slice it very thinly so the pieces are a lot smaller. Fennel is used in a lot of dishes, um, especially with um, Indian dishes, fennel seed and so forth. Um, it's really good. A lot of European French cuisine uses fennel. Um, it is something that is very, it's a taste that's very prominent, but the thing is that it's always, always good to try different foods regardless of whether you like them. It does not matter if you don't like the taste. It's more important that you try it out and then after that, uh, you grow with it. Okay, so now what I've done is that I've got in my bowl, I have my, um, I have my kale and my fennel. Just gonna take a um, tongs, I almost have a spatula there, uh, tongs and just mixing it up. Remember, this is packed, absolutely packed with all really, really good nutrition. And what's better, uh, great about this is that because it's uh, both of the vegetables are very fibrous, means that you can add it like very similar to a coleslaw. So you can add it and marinate it and actually the flavors are going to get better. All right, so we've mixed that up. Now what we're going to do is that we are going to make the dressing, okay? So the dressing calls for lemon juice, olive oil, garlic, and Parmesan salt and pepper, and some smoked paprika. So what I'm gonna do, I'll move this over so you guys can see, is that I have my lemon, And I'm just rolling my lemon like this to actually uh, soften the lemon. I am going to kind of add to the recipe where I'm going to, because I have the lemon zest and the lemon zest is really nice. So I'm just kind of adding it. It's not in the recipe, but yeah, let's cheat. Let's break the rules, right? Lemon and fennel go really, really well. There we go. No, it's much now. What's the uh, what's the tool, Jeanette, that you used? Uh, 
this is the microplane. So um, years ago, it was like the big, big new gadget and everything. Um, but it actually really, really is useful. It's one of my most useful tools. It's just, it's basically you're cutting your, it's a grater, but the way that it's designed is that it's really easy to just immediately go great over the food and everything. That's it. All right, so I'm massaging my lemon on my cutting board. And then after that, I cut it in two. I'm using a, a sieve, a small sieve, um, while I'm squeezing out the lemons uh, to pick up any of the seeds. Oh. I want to make a plane. <laughs> want one for a while. We have to say the smell in our house is getting nice already just with the fennel and the lemon. It's so fresh in here. It is. It's really, really nice. There we go. I love this because it's a very springy kind of like meal. Um, and it's nice, it's not hard to do. All right, so I have added uh, the lemon juice, okay? And what we're going to do is that we need two tablespoons of lemon juice. Now, depending on your lemons, um, you can get two tablespoons. So that was about one lemon that I did. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to add olive oil. Ideally, and this is like, what's the dip? Uh, real life, this is, excuse me, this is actually uh, vinegar. <laughs> I'll just go get my olive oil, apologize for that. All right, that's better. Okay. We, we have a different oil. Is it is avocado oil okay? Yeah, that's actually a very, very good option as well. Um, olive oil is just something that we typically use. Uh, it has a very pronounced flavor. Avocado oil will also be really good as well. Um, I wouldn't recommend necessarily uh, canola or vegetable because it's got very little taste with it. So olive oil would be or avocado oil that uh, would be the good option. So now I'm just adding some oil. So it's about two tablespoons. We don't want too much oil. Okay, and we're using a, a whisk to mix it up. Then we are going to add a clove of garlic. Okay, there we go. And about three tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. Now the Parmesan cheese is really, really gonna make that flavor. And then last but not least, so it's kind of chunky right now, that's okay, all right? So it's kind of thick right now. Perfectly okay. I'm just going to get my salt and pepper. All right. So now let's get um let's get the mixture in okay so what we're going to do is that we are going to add the mixture of lemon and uh olive oil and parmesan and garlic into the mixture here Now you could put it directly in the uh, the bowl as you're doing it. 
Um, I only kind of put it on the side because we're working with learning how to measure. But definitely for the more experienced people, you could just kind of like squeeze the, the lemon juice over, add the um, olive oil, the parmesan and everything as you go. Now we're not overdoing it with the oil. I am going to take uh, some salt and pepper. So I'm going to season the mixture. Some salt and some pepper. And we are adding a little bit of smoked paprika. Smoked paprika really gives a, a very dip, uh, deep flavor. So we're just gonna sprinkle over that. And we're gonna mix it up. So like I said, this is going to be an excellent way of um, getting your vegetables in, right? So we've mixed this mixture up here. Last but not least, what we're going to do is that on top of that, we are going to add our cherry tomatoes. Okay, so we're going to add that for color and taste. It really makes, as soon as you add your cherry tomatoes, it really makes the salad actually pop. And then last but not least, we are going to add some of our nuts. So we want to have uh, some, well, I'm using almonds, but you can use other things. And we have some pumpkin seeds. And I'm adding some sunflower seeds too. And all of that is going to be a nice little crunch. On top, you could sprinkle some Parmesan on top, so you have a beautiful salad. Okay. Oh, it's good for our brains. It's del it looks uh, visually delicious. It, it it really really is a nice salad. It's got a nice crunch to it and everything. There's not too much fat in there, so it's not too much olive oil. So it's actually kind of coating it, not drowning in it, which is really, really important. This would be nice so, if we're receiving guests as well. It's such a pretty thing to put on the table, you know? It is, it is. It's really nice and really, really useful. All right, so now what we're gonna do is that we've done our salad. Uh, we're just gonna clean up a little bit. And then after that, we are going to move on to the berry crunch, okay? So we're doing things a little bit kind of like, okay, we're, you know, we're not doing them, we're doing things a little bit back, backwards, but we're not, okay? So sometimes when we're preparing meals, we actually have to go from last, do the first, the last item first, okay? So this this recipe right over here, this recipe would actually be really good for uh, to, to allow them to sit. Same thing for the berry, uh, the, the, uh, the berry crunch. And then the mimosa is really at the last mi minute. And the bagels and locks, because we're toasting the bagel, so you don't have to, uh, that's at the last minute as well. So we're just going to do a clean up, and then after that, we are going to move on to the berry crunch. Excellent. Thank you, Jeanette. We're, uh, we're a little behind the eight ball here. We're, uh, we're still adding our dressing to our salad. So for those of you who are joining us on, uh, on uh, an after recording, you guys can pause and finish your salad. And, uh, and we're gonna do ours as fast as we can right now. <laughs> Don't worry, tell me when you're, you're ready and we'll move on to the next one. Thank you.
go. All right, we're wrapping up our salad here. So you're going to tell me when you are ready for the um for the berries parfait. So we're ready on our side here. We did have a quick question that came up with the salad. Um, we were wondering, does the uh, the kale start to soften the longer that we leave the dressing on? Is that why we're starting with that, or? Uh, no, because it's a very hearty vegetable, because it's a very fibrous vegetable, it will hold its shape a lot longer than, let's say, a Boston leaf lettuce. Um, it's, it really is a good, um, kale and fennel are very good for making, like, pickling for, like, coleslaw and so forth. So, like, the kale, not as much. But we are, it's actually best that we do it at the beginning to let the, uh, the, flavors to develop and it will hold its shape a lot more. All right. Okay. So we are going to start with the berry crunch. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to make the crunch. So in the crunch, we are going to need some sunflower seeds. All right. So about two teaspoons of sunflower seeds. I'm adding a little bit of pumpkin seeds to it and everything because or I'm actually mixing them up. I'm, uh, these are the sunflower seeds and these would be the pumpkins. And then I'm adding a little bit of nuts to it. And then oatmeal. Okay, so you're looking at two teaspoons of uh, seeds, two, two teaspoons of oats, and two teaspoons of nuts such as almonds. Now this will produce about four, uh, four toppings, all right? So you got a nice little crunch like this. And then all you do is you take some honey and you mix it up. This is the sweetener. Now we don't want to have things too sweet. We live in a very, very sugary society. Everything has sugar in it and everything. So we want to try and reduce it. Um, so this is this is essentially the sweetness that I'll, all that we're going to do with this. I'm going to add a little bit more oats. Now, uh, for the yogurt, okay, so we're putting that aside. For the yogurt, you can use vanilla because vanilla has a bit of flavoring in it. You can use, um, it also has a little bit of sugar. You can have a low fat or a regular vanilla, uh, definitely. I'm using plain Greek yogurt uh, because it's nice and thick. It reduces the amount of sweetness that's in there. And it's also very low fat. So, you know, that's always a good thing. Now, the other thing, before we start with the yogurt, you need to have uh, parfait glasses. Now, you have a few choices. On the uh, recipe, I was suggesting a short glass like this. This is what I have for when we're drinking. Um, we're drinking uh, just out of... Uh, orange juice or whatever. So this is a good one, but it's it's nice and short. You don't want long ones because you're going to look, typically you have three, three layers of yogurt and fruit, and then finally uh, the, the crunch on top. 
Now, if you are like me and you want to get fancy, we have martini glasses. Martini glasses are an awful lot of fun. So remember, three layers, okay? So what we are going to do is that we are going to um, add some of the berries to the bottom, okay? So now because I'm using a martini glass, I'm gonna kind of place my biggest ones, big, biggest blackberries at the bottom just to kind of give a little look to it. So this is a very easy, easy meal to do. Um, it doesn't take, it, 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 it's so easy to do, but it doesn't take a lot to make it pretty as well. That's why it's a lot of, a lot of fun. All right, so we're gonna get some of the yogurt. Before pouring the yogurt out, you want to always make sure that you're mixing your yogurt in the container because sometimes yogurt will separate. So you'll have liquids and everything at the bottom and then the thicker stuff on top or so forth and everything. So you want to actually make sure you mix it well. And then you're going to add a layer of yogurt. Okay, so remember, it's all about presentation. It's the easiest thing in the world, and it's all about presentation. So then what we're going to do is that we're going to put the berries. Now, the berries, I'm actually going to be placing them on the edge of the cup, just like this, so that we could see that there are berries. Okay, so if you are using a mixture or a flat glass, you just want to make sure that um, you could see the berries on the glass. Actually, I'm gonna just complete it like that. Okay, so we see the berries. After that, we are gonna do another layer of yogurt. Spread it out so it looks nice and pretty. Now, depending, depending on the size of your glass, you're either going to get two or three um, layers. Okay, so the bigger the glass, the more layers you're going to do, the smaller the glass or the different shape it is, less layers. So I've got to almost the top. So you could see, this is a better example right over here. You could see the berry at the bottom a layer of yogurt, and then some berries on top, and a layer of yogurt again. Now I'm going to actually stop because I'm at the top of the glass. So this is something that you guys can adjust as you go. Now, remember that mixture? We have that mixture of almonds and all that good stuff and everything. Okay, so now we're going to place that mixture, that crunch on top. Okay, we're going to make sure it looks nice and pretty. You could spread it out all the way to the ends if you want, or you could put it in the middle, it's however you want. It really is however you want. It's all about presentation. This meal, this item is all about making everything look pretty. Pretty is good. Go and there we go. And here is an almond, and then last but not least. I'm going to take some berries and I'll put the berries on top. And then at the last minute, I'm going to go get some mint and I'm going to put some mint on top.
So my mint is a plant, so that's why I leave it <laughs> at the window. There we go. Looking nice and pretty. So you've got an absolutely beautiful meal coming together with like a very, very healthy, beautiful looking salad. And then we have the, this is a pretty, a pretty side. We have the um, berry crunch, parfait. Very simple, very beautiful, um, and really nutritious. Right, so there oh, we go. <laughs> it looks so fancy in your nice cups. It's beautiful. Presentation is everything for this one. It really is. It's like it's just have fun with it. You know, it's all about that. All right. So once we have that, um, we're going to clean up. Now we're going to be doing the um, the bagels. Okay. So we're going to be make them, making the bagels, and then we're going to be finishing off the mimosas. So I'm just doing a quick cleanup. So one of the tricks, culinary tricks, clean as you go. It's a saying that we say all the time. Every time you do something, you make sure you clean up and you try and reuse the same utensils that, that you've been using, right? So you wash them and then after that, use them again. All right, so I'm just gonna do a quick cleanup. So, All right. All right, so you're going to tell me when you're ready uh, for the next step, which is the bagel. Um, we are actually going to need our cream cheese, our lemons, or a little lemon juice, chives, and capers, okay? So I'll just get a spoon for my capers. All right, so you'll tell so, me when you're ready. Yeah, we're all, I've got thumbs up over here. We're all ready to go. Um, okay. Yeah, we're good. Thank you, Jeanette. Awesome, all right. So um, smoked salmon, uh, really, really um, a great way. Salmon is an awesome veg uh, vegetable, awesome fish to actually, that is packed with omega-3s, right? So this is really, really why, why we focused on, on seafood and fish rather than on other items um, because it, it's packed for brain food and everything. Now, um, what we are gonna do is that we're gonna start off by making the cream cheese spread. So remember you go into the stores and you see the little tubs with all sorts of flavors of different cream cheeses. You have chai, you have this, you, you smoke salmon, you've got all sorts of fine herbs. You can actually make them at home and they're much nicer um, when you make them. So what I've done is that I have some cream cheese right over here. Now, if you have a mixer, like a sand mixer like this, you could take a block of cream cheese, one of those the plain blocks of cream cheese, and whip it up in a machine like this. If you don't have a machine like this, or you just don't feel like doing, like getting out extra equipment to start whipping things up. You can use the whipped uh, cream cheese. Just remember that the cream cheese that's whipped is slightly different from the block cream cheese. The only things that are really, really different with it is that they add, um, they add um, ingredients and like to make sure it stays whipped. Okay, so that's the only difference with that and everything. 
Um, but yes, so you can use uh, some whipped uh, cream cheese, okay? So I have my cream cheese right here, okay? And then what we are going to do is that we are going to get that zest of lemon again. Lemon, cream cheese, smoked salmon, seafood, fish, lemons go perfectly with this. It absolutely is awesome. So again, it's my microplane, right? If you're not, you, you can use a regular zester. Um, so I'm just adding the zest directly. Now, um, trick, if anyone does have a microplane and they're not entirely sure how to do, it, do this, um, if you grate your lemon too much, it'll go to the white part of the lemon. And the white part of the lemon is actually very bitter, all right? So you don't want to have the white part of the lemon. So what I do is that I, I grate about maybe three to four times, and then I stop and I find another place on the lemon. So one, two, three, four, I kind of tap one, and I move the lemon around one, two, three, four, tap, find another spot on the lemon, one, two, three, four. That way I'm making sure that I'm not really getting the white part of the lemon, uh, because that will make it like that. Two, three, four. All right, we're good. One, two, three, four. Okay, after that, you want a little bit of lemon juice. Okay, so I'm just going to use my sieve again in my little container just to catch any of the seeds. I just find it easier when I do it like this. You don't have to. You can like, there's different tricks of doing it. But honestly, for people that are, are new to cooking and everything, just keep things simple. There we go. So we're going to add some of the juice. It's about one tablespoon of lemon juice. You don't want to, you can always add, but it's very difficult to remove. So it's better to add a little bit and then add more later on. All right, so the last thing that we need for this is that we need some chives. So I have some beautiful fresh chives right over here that I'm just going to cut up into small bits. Go. And then we're going to add All right, so we've added our chives and we need to add a little bit of garlic to it. So about one clove or one teaspoon of garlic and then last but not least some capers. Now, if you don't like capers, it's okay. You don't have to put them in. Uh, capers do go really well uh, with smoked salmon. But some people find it a little bit strong. That's okay. So, just to recap what we've got here, we have in the bowl, we have cream cheese, we have lemon zest, lemon juice, garlic, chives and capers. So we're just going to mix that up. There we go. And the mixture is done. Again, this mixture is going to, over time, improve in flavor. So if you make this the day before, um and serve it the next day it's actually going to taste better all right so now we are going to be moving on to the bagel part 
Now, word about bagels. Bagels are um, a Montreal fan. Like, I love Montreal bagels and everything. Love them, love them, love them. Um, the only thing with bagels is that nutritionally, one bagel equals about four of your car carbohydrate portions for the day, all right? So as much as we do love our bagels, we're actually overeating on our carb um, portions. Um, not like we're, we're doing, this isn't a nutrition class, but nevertheless, bagels, <laughs> bagels are kind of high in carbs. So what you could do if you want to actually reduce is that they have bagel thins, which are a lot lighter. Um, and they're actually pretty good because it's not, when you bite into it, it's not all tasting of bagel. It's a little bit more of a, a balanced um, a bagel, like balanced flavor. So you, you taste the bagel, you taste the cream cheese, you taste the, taste the smoked salmon, but it's not all bagel, right? So I have bagel thins. I, I actually happen to get uh, these are uh, soy, so I don't have any allergies or intolerance or anything, but these are actually gluten free. Uh, now, again, I, I've learned um, in Montreal to toast or not to toast your bagel. <laughs> like, that actually is very, I, I've seen debates about this. Now, uh, the way I see it is that if you've got a bagel that's fresh out of the oven, you're at St. Peter's and everything, you don't need to toast it or anything like that. But if you have something like what I have here, which is gluten-free and everything's a little bit, it's a thinner product and everything, toasting it actually does give a nice little crunch to it. So really, it depends on how fresh your bagels are and how you like to dress them. Um, it's a debate. Um, well, we're team toast over here, Jeanette. <laughs> I'm not. Except for one, except for one person. Uh, so, yeah, so it, it, these are the kind of debates that you have in Montreal. So anyway, anyways, I'm toasting you. Um, and while I toast it, I'm going to get, a, a, get my smoked salmon ready and my arugula and also my cream cheese and my plate. All right, so I'm getting my plate ready here. Move things over. Okay, so um, a little bit of a word on uh, smoked salmon, okay? So smoked salmon, it, food is really expensive right now. Um, so we are definitely having to make different cuts and everything. Um, if you are able to get good quality smoked salmon, ideally it's the best. Um, I do notice a taste difference in terms of some of the cheaper salmon versus uh, something like this. This is oak smoked um, Atlantic uh, salmon. So it's very Scottish themed, which, you know, that's my background. So it works really, uh, really well, but it's a double smoked um, smoked salmon. And you're gonna taste the difference um, in terms of, of the quality. So I got this one, but like I said, you use whatever you can because right now, uh, food is really expensive, and we need to be considerate of our budgets, and that's okay. That's actually a good strategy. <laughs> uh, 
All right, so. My bagel will almost be finished. Here you go. The other thing about uh, toasting your bagel as well is that they will hold up the structure longer uh, versus when your bread is fresh, it'll be a little less. All right, so we've got our beautiful bagel right over here. We're going to take some of that, um, some of that cream cheese. Now, I am being very generous with the cream cheese right now, but if you want to be careful with it in terms of portion control, that's the culinary in me. When it, when it comes to like making sure that I have enough cream cheese on there and everything, I, I make sure it looks pretty. <laughs> so I'm like, ooh, that cream cheese definitely is a good thing. Um, if you want, you could put it on the second layer. I usually do it a little bit thinner on the second, the top layer. Um, when you're making sandwiches, uh, that's something that a lot of people don't even realize, is that when you're making sandwiches, you always have to have a layer of something, you know, a layer of fat. So a layer of butter, a mayonnaise, mustard, something between the bread and the the interior of the um of the sandwich because that acts like a layer. So it's really actually important to have um, a thin layer of something. All right, so there we go. So I've got my smoked salmon, uh, my bagel here. Now I'm going to place my smoked salmon. I'm going to place the smoked salmon on the top of the bottom part of my sandwich. Now here's me again making sure that my salmon looks all nice and pretty. I tend to do curls when it comes to flat pieces of meat like this or fish. Um, because I find that it really just kind of is nice and uh, very pretty like this. So here's what you got so far. Okay. Very, very easy. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to add a little bit of arugula. Now, why do I choose arugula? Arugula has got a really, really nice peppery flavor. Okay. Um, and it, when it goes with smoked salmon, and the flavored cream cheese, it actually goes beautiful. Um, so I love arugula uh, be, just because of that that peppery flavor that it, it brings to the, the food and everything. So I am adding it right over here. The only thing about arugula is that it doesn't last as long as other vegetables, let's say for the kale. Um, if we added the uh, dressing to the arugula, not the kale, the arugula wouldn't last as long. You want to make sure that it's all looking nice and pretty. And then you put the lid on. And if you want, you can cut it in two. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Okay, so let me just clean my hands before I handle anything. All right, so here you go. You have a beautiful, um, a beautiful smoked salmon with cream cheese. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add some of that salad. Because ultimately, that's what we're coming with. This is like an extremely healthy, vibrant meal. 
really, really is nice. There we go. With your bagel. And then because I can see how pretty this is starting to look, I'm going to add a little bit of lemon for decoration. There we go. And there's the lemon for decoration right over here. And then last but not least, so we've got our beautiful parfaits. We have our smoked salmon bagel with our kale and parmesan salad with fennel. Last but not least is the mimosas. So fun times. Oh, as always, my favorite part of the day when I can crack over, open something sparkly before lunchtime. Oh, it's, it's always awesome. Absolutely. We're looking forward to making ours on our side, too. I have to tell you, I took a little dip into that cream cheese that came out of the mixer, and it is spectacular. Mm. Oh, my goodness. It's so fresh. <laughs> it's not making it to the bagels 100% the way it is. <laughs> We're going to lose some along the way, I think. Um, you, could, you could actually serve that as a dip as well for something like if you're doing like a seafood platter, um, you know, having that as a bit of a dip. I would probably add a little bit of heavy cream to it to make it a little bit more dippable, um, if that's a word. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a very good uh, Oh, it's that fresh lemon taste with um, the fresh garlic in there is just so yummy. All right, we're about to do a pop on the hamster. Ooh, nice. I like a pop. <laughs> All right, so easy peasy. So we always want to have our um, uh, a nice orange juice. And if you go on any fancy vacations or anything like that, or you go to a fancy restaurant uh, for brunch, you always get offered uh, a possibility of having a mimosa. And a mimosa is very, very simple. All it is is half champagne and half orange juice. Obviously, quality makes the makes it nice, uh, makes it better. Uh, we are working with non-alcoholic. Uh, so I have a sparkling mousseau. Uh, with and has grapes and pears with it and it's zero percent alcohol because you know we're working with children so um but also it actually it has a nice flavor with it there we go oops you want to add a little bit at a time And then not last but not least, orange juice. Again, try and make sure it is the best quality that you can. Um, I got 100% uh, orange juice. Um, I also have no sugar added because we really don't need that. And then all you're gonna do, I also have the one that's no pulp. My kids don't really like the pulp. Um, now, it's most certainly better uh, to eat your oranges when it comes to brain food, rather than, nice, uh, rather than drinking your oranges. So it's always better to eat your fruits. Uh, but nevertheless, this still has a lot of dazzling little touch to it. I'm just going to get some mint and then we're good. Oh, there we go. The mint actually adds a nice little flavor to it. 
All right, so let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, so we have an absolutely beautiful salad, kale and fennel salad, uh, with a, diff a variety of nuts on there and different seeds. Then we have a whole wheat bagel with uh, smoked salmon and a homemade cream cheese mixture with arugula. And then we also have an absolutely beautiful, this one is a beautiful uh, parfait. So it's a parfait crunch with yogurt, berries, fresh berries, and um, uh, pumpkin seed, sunflower seed, and almonds in my case, with a little bit of honey, very simple, uh, to finish that off. So voila, you have just made an incredible, um, an incredible family brunch that is brain powered. <laughs> Absolutely delicious and amazing. It's uh, it's difficult to get to the end of the class and have all the smells wandering around you and the tastes. And, um, but I, I have to thank you, Jeanette, again, for such a wonderful cooking class to do with us. We uh, we are left with a table full of yummies and uh, and a want to learn more. So if um, if any of our uh, watchers would love to, to find you again, uh, how would they do that? Uh, yeah, so they can visit me at epiculus.com. Um, all of the information is in the booklet. Okay. And if you're looking for any uh, different private events, such as a birthday uh, birthday parties and so forth, or they're looking at teaching their children a little bit more about cooking, uh, you can visit me there. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, well, we're so thankful for you, and we're thank you thankful for the delicious food you've taught us how to make today. So um, have a wonderful weekend and uh, happy end of spring break to everyone. And uh, we'll see you in the next time. Take care, Jeanette. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>